Hello everyone. After reviewing the information on course navigation and building your Canvas profile, you are now ready to dive into some actual content. So let's do it. Science is the process of gathering and testing knowledge about the world. Therefore, research is essential to this because it allows the systematic collection of data and investigation of reality in order to establish facts. In this course, you will gain the basic tools to conduct your own research project. But is psychology really a science, you ask? How is psychological science different from the hard sciences, like for example, chemistry or physics? Psychology's aim is to describe, explain, predict, and sometimes treat behavior. For example, my knowledge of psychological processes allows me to closely observe and describe my infant daughter's language development, explain certain behaviors, such as her sound-making patterns, including cooing and babbling, and finally, anticipate upcoming developmental milestones, such as the uttering of her first word within a predictable time frame. Therefore, as a science, psychology relies on the scientific method and is distinguishable from the humanities like literature, religion, art, or history, which study human culture or experience and allow for multiple truths. Like the hard sciences, psychology derives knowledge from systematic research based on empirical observation and hypothesis testing. But in contrast to physics or biology, psychology is considered a social science, such as sociology and economics, in that it concerns itself with mental processes and behavior rather than, say, atomic particles or DNA molecules. Where the scientific method is concerned, falsifiability of claims is key. This is because we, including scientists, have a tendency for confirmation bias. Therefore, scientists seek out evidence that might disconfirm their expectations or falsify their hypotheses. Also, like all sciences, the field of psychology is a collective effort with a built-in system of checks and balances. That is, for research conclusions to be credible, their respective studies need to be published in appropriate scientific papers that are reviewed and approved by other experts in the field. So, how can you tell a science from a pseudoscience, something that disguises itself as science in order to gain credibility, such as neurolinguistic programming, creationism, or astrology? That is, how do you spot fake science? It is not easy, but... For one, pseudoscience often makes vague claims and or generates untestable hypotheses that are not falsifiable. Consider the young Earth creationists believe that the Earth is only about six to 10,000 years old. If you ask about all the evidence of things far older than that, such as radioisotope-dated rocks or light from distant galaxies, creationists will claim that all of it was created that way. This hypothesis can account for everything and is not testable because it is imprecise and fundamentally biased. In addition, proponents of pseudoscience adhere to methods of authority and rely on lack of critical thinking. They unquestioningly take someone's word on faith, such as that of a parent, religious leader, celebrity, or even doctors or scientists. Finally, fake science is usually based on anecdotes or testimonials about a particular person or incident, rather than on scientific sources. Take the supposedly brain-boosting intelligent pill supplement that claims to increase intelligence, focus, and memory. How, you ask? With a vaguely identified, quote, blend of nutrients, amino acids, and vitamin B6, unquote, that is supposedly endorsed by Stephen Hawking and Anderson Cooper. Your best defense? Think critically. Question sources, motives, and methods. And conduct reliable research. To conclude, psychology is a social science that heavily relies on scientific research to build knowledge about behavior and mental processes. It has many subfields ranging from biological psychology to clinical and educational psychology, and the questions that it investigates can generally be categorized as basic or applied. On the one hand, basic research tries to answer fundamental questions and address theoretical issues, like, for example, what is the behavioral effect of excess dopamine in specific brain areas? What are the cognitive mechanisms underlying language learning? On the other hand, applied research addresses practical problems and attempts solutions. For example, do vaping cessation ads impact vaping rates? What is the best approach for increasing recycling behavior in consumers? In this course, you'll get to design your own study in order to answer a specific research question. And that's it for this mini lecture and screencast. After reviewing it and going over your course materials, you should be able to explain psychological science and distinguish it from non-science and pseudoscience, generate examples of basic versus applied research, and generate testable hypotheses. 
You are now ready to complete your first assignment on Canvas, your learning management system. I'll catch you in the next screencast.